What's going on, rock stars? Welcome back to another episode of The 1% Life. I'm your host, peak performance coach and trainer, Joni Dillon. And today, oh my goodness, today, rock stars, I have an absolute treat for you. My guest today is unlike any human being you will ever meet. No joke. She quickly rose to the top of three, not one, but three network marketing companies back to back and is now the number one income earner, has the number one and fastest growing team in her entire company um, of like just amazing, co- let me just say the name of the company, prove it. She's the founder, founder of Empire U where she leads, okay, can we just start that over again? Cause that is just fumbly jumbly right now. <laughs> oh good. It's relatable. I love it. So good. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Let's do this one again. All right. What's going on, rock stars? Welcome back to another episode of The 1% Life. I'm your host, peak performance coach and trainer, Joni Dillon. And today, rock stars, I have an absolute treat in store for you. My guest today is unlike any human being you will ever encounter in your life. She is the number one network marketer in her company. And let me just not stop there. She started just two and a half years ago and quickly rose through the ranks all the way up, leading the number one team in her company, Prove It, to the top. She recently got awarded, um, let's just call it a Lamborghini, amongst all kinds of other awards, like the Ultimate Paysetter Award, the Icon Earner Award. I mean, come on. I bet you we could line up her awards and it would fill an entire house. This woman is an absolute beast. And let me just call her the, the boss. When I think of boss individuals, not just females, but individuals in the world, I absolutely admire her work ethic. I admire everything that she's created, her vision for her team, her vision for the world. I am so excited to bring to you someone who I call my personal mentor, Miss Jessie Lee, aka Boss Lee. Welcome to the 1% Life. Oh, I'm so excited. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm pumped to be on here. Quite the introduction. I love that. And uh, just, I, I kind of did like, a, like an air, like hallelujah thing when you said it, but I know it's a podcast, so I'll let everyone know. I hate boss babe. I hate, oh, it's a lady boss. I cannot stand this. Right. I don't know why it bothers me so much, except for the fact that I'm not just a girl boss. I'm just a boss. So thank you for saying a boss individual. That gets me like ready to razzle dazzle for sure. Uh, so thank you for that. Oh my goodness. Well, you are that and so much more and really the, they're in for such a treat. And I, you know, it's so easy, Jesse Lee, for us to look at, I'm just going to call you boss Lee. Is that okay? Like, let's just, you can call it, yep, call it whatever. all if right, let's go. Podcast, okay? so boss Lee. <laughs> Um, it's so easy for somebody to see the success, right? When we think of, I mean, we're in some crazy times right now. Can we agree? I mean, I'm sure it's going to come up. Um, so why not just start with it? We are in some unprecedented times where people are really, really struggling. And I know that you see this and they're looking, they're looking for a way out. But here's what I feel like happens. I feel like we see these people on Instagram living their best life, right? I mean, and yes, you drive a Lamborghini, but you did not start with a Lamborghini. You did not start and come to this world with a Lamborghini. Um, talk, take us back, like how your life, your story, it's so powerful. Yeah. Back to your roots. I appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, I have a rule of thumb, which uh, I'm a very tactical trainer. I don't know that I'm training people on this podcast, but I feel like that's just my- hey, you take it wherever natural, you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the permission. My natural state. But I always tell people, do not share your glory without sharing your story. Mm. And the reason I say that is because it's very easy to look at, like you said, the Lamborghini, the Porsche, the Land Rover, the multi-million dollar homes. Like it's easy to look at all that and go, oh gosh, like I don't even like her, you know, which I think is what people do sometimes, which is why I always bring it back to the real story because the real story is not at all that, like that is just, that's fruits of the labor, you know, but I, there's a quote that I, that is still one of my favorite quotes of all time. And then I'll tell you my story. It's a Bill Gates quote. And he says, it's not your fault if you're born poor, but it is your fault if you die poor. Ooh, ooh, I got full spirit pimples on that one. That is such a powerful quote. 
Like it's okay, say it one more time. Like say it. it's so impactful. <laughs> I know it's so good. It's not your fault if you're born poor, but it is your fault if you die poor. And I don't know why when I heard that nine years ago, when I was totally in victim mode, that it finally ripped me out of it. But I, because I was that person, like if we go back into my childhood, uh, here's another just training. Can we, like, can we just yeah. go all the, way, go back? All the <laughs> way back? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. And, and the reason I share so openly, and I, I hope it inspires others to do the same is that humans do not relate to the glitz and the glam and the whatever. Like it might make you look at it. It might make you ask questions, but human beings relate to the vulnerabilities. Human beings relate to the ugly. Human beings relate to, oh, you have pain also. They don't relate to all the glory and the cars and the fancy stuff and, oh, my life is so perfect. And so in this Instagram world that you kind of started to mention, it drives me nuts Mm -hmm. because that's not why I'm top recruiter. And I've always been top recruiter for, I have averaged, this isn't, I don't say anything to impress people. I say it to impress upon them things. I have, there has not been a month I have not personally recruited 20 people. That's like my low since I began this. And it's not because I ever had the fancy stuff, quite frankly, the fancy stuff, when I talk about it, it hurts my recruiting, write that down. Mm -hmm. Because people think, oh, I have to have all this stuff. I have to have the homes, I have to have the cars, I have to have the boats, I have to travel. It's all contraire, my friend, it is literally the opposite. Because when I talk about growing up in poverty, when I talk about walking to the convenience store for a gallon of milk, when I talk about being raised by my Nana and my granddaddy because my parents were unfit to parent, when I talk about an abusive home, when I talk about knowing what it's like to get a chicken on Sunday to last a a household of six people until the end of the week, which means you're having like, I mean, by the end of the week, there's no chicken in the chicken fried rice. You know what I mean? Like that's always the last meal of the week before you get the old chicken again on Sunday to last another week. Those kinds of things people go, oh my God, like if she can, and that's, that's just like some of it, right? But I'm not going to go, like, there's no point in going into a ton of stuff because we got a lot to talk about. I mean, I'm very open about it, but it's like that gives people hope. And especially at a time right now, like you mentioned, our job is to be hope dealers. Our job is to show people there's another way. Our job is to show people that, you know what? It might suck right now. You might've just lost your job. You might've just lost your home. You might be losing your car. You might be up to your ears in debt. You you know what? It can always be worse, first of all. And second of all, understand there are always options. And it's those people, whether you want to call them optimists or pessimists or realists or whatever, I think it's just real that if you look at life on the brighter side of life, you know what? There's a lot of hope out there. There's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of opportunity, especially if you're, if you're listening to a podcast, you have more opportunity than 99% of the world. Like get mm-hmm. with it, sister friend or man. I don't know who's listening. <laughs> like, get with the program. And so I share that. And I share all of that because when I joined my first company, this is nine years ago. This is uh, January, 2011. Okay. I joined my first company not because I wanted extra stuff, not because there was a pair of shoes I wanted to buy, not because there was like, you know, I want some designer jeans, a little bit of extra, whatever party money would be great. Oh, no, 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 no. I joined my first company because I could not afford to pay $300 a month in rent. Like I was literally living in somebody's basement, not a joke, literally living in a basement, didn't have my own kitchen, didn't have my own bathroom, sharing a bathroom with two other people in a basement of a house. Uh, and the person who I was living with said, I need another $300 uh, a month in rent. And I went, well, I, I, I literally was like, what, what? (laughs) Cause my check, I don't know who can, who I'm speaking to right now that can relate to this, but I know that, but it was like every time I got paid every two weeks in a good job, like I'm doing air quotations, like a good job, a stable job, a stable paycheck, a, you know, 401k benefits, all this stuff that everybody's like, oh gosh, you must be stable. You work in a pathology lab. But let me tell you, I I didn't have a spending problem. I had a, there's a lot of taxes when you're making 45 grand a year problem. I had a problem that when I went to work every day, it was a two hour round trip commute and I had to pay for gas. And that's when gas prices were much higher. I had a problem that I went to school in New York city and now I was home and I had to have a car granted with a beater car. I had a car payment now. Like I didn't have some kind of crazy anything. And so I say that because I think it's important to know that 
I went from needing $300 a month to I've made, there's been months I've made well over $300,000 a month. And you absolutely can do the same. Like you don't, your, your story does not have to be your ending. And there is so much hope that. in this world. You I just have that. to take it. It's mm, so, so, so good. I mean, how many people can relate to that? If you're listening to this right now and you can relate to not being able to pay your rent or needing to come up with a little additional few hundred dollars, then Jesse Lee right now is your hope. Boss Lee is your hope. And I, and I absolutely love that. Can I ask you this question? When did you decide that you were meant for more? <laughs> um, that started really young, actually. That's a really good question. Nobody's ever asked me. <laughs> uh, I've decided when I was meant that I was meant to more probably. At, I mean, I don't know the exact breaking point, but it must have been at some point when, like, maybe when I was watching abuse in the household and like domestic violence, and I was like, that cannot be. Like, this is not. And I just knew that I that I wanted more than that. I knew I wanted. Um, different than always struggling. I knew I didn't want to be the kid who couldn't even go on, um, you know, field trips or anything. I always had to sit in the uh, cafeteria at lunch because it cost, you know, $10 or something to go on a field trip. And I kept seeing all this really negative stuff. And I just went, God, like, I can't live like this. And so I think from a very young age that I started showing things like showing signs that I wanted to do more like Girl Scouts when you're selling Girl Scout cookies. Like, I was like, I have to be the best. Are you balling uh, out Girl Scout cookies? Oh, actually? yeah, I man. Like, I probably, so, all, all in my honor, all my honor, I will try to serve God in my country to help that's people right, all right. to live by the Girl Scout law. That's right. Like, absolutely. Great. Like, I remember, all, yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, I, I did, I was always number one there. And then it was, because I felt like it was an opportunity to show people that I had some kind of greatness in me because I didn't have that opportunity in my household. Same thing when we would sell, you know, wrapping paper or whatever door to door. Like I was like, I will just outwork you. Even, you know, whatever it is. I set up um, like vegetable stands. I'd pick up from the garden and I'd sell, you know, red and green peppers. I was just always trying to do more. And I, I realized very quickly that a lot of, sorry, I realized very quickly a lot of stuff came to me pretty naturally. A lot of little things would come to me naturally, but I would, I would actually back down often. Okay. Like there were things I was telling and I would never really get to my full potential repeatedly. This is like a constant. So these were patterns that were showing up in your oh, life. Oh yeah. Constant, like self um, deprecating things like, oh gosh, my family's never been good at that. Why would I be good at that? Oh, you know, my mom and dad are terrible in relationships. I'm never going to be good in relationships or, oh, nobody likes me. You know what? All these stupid mm -hmm. negative self talk that is not even accurate. We just lie to ourselves. We can get to that if you want to, but um, specifically when it came to network marketing, I did have a moment that I can pinpoint okay. because I was doing well. I got to that point where it was like, Oh, I'm above average. I was like, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm not just this basic, you know, whatever. And I really started to, to, uh, like eat my own cookie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, Oh my gosh, like I'm hashtag boss <laughs> And right. you know, if you don't know, now, you know, I make $30,000 a month. Oh my God. Like I was like, okay, I never sounded like that. I definitely had this like a uh, nearly unhealthy ego about me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I remember uh, I talk about this a lot because I think it's super important. I went to uh, GoPro, which is a, um, it's an industry generic event and Eric, Eric Worry. Yeah. Yep. Eric Worry, one of my, one of my good friends. And he's mentored me a lot in this profession. Um, <laughs> And I just never forget it because I felt like I was the bomb. Like I, I would have told you I'm the bomb, right? I mean, like in a little like nudge, nudge <laughs> way. Right. And then I've got this row of guys behind me and Eric does this thing that just, I mean, it rocked my world, rocked my world. And I want you all to think about times in your life that you've had moments like this. So you can reflect on them and find out where they are in your life and decide to make a change. Because he does this thing where he goes, all right, stand up if we make a hundred grand a year. Now I'm standing because I'm like, mm, mm, 25 years old, mm, you know, like I'm awesome, right? I've been making a hundred grand a year since I was 20. That was brushing her shoulders off for those. Oh yeah, sorry, brushing her shoulders <laughs> off. Like, mm, like, oh, don't you wish you knew what it was like to make a hundred grand a year at 22? Because let me tell you, or well, I guess I was 23, but whatever. Like I was so whatever. And then. He's like, all right, stay standing for making 250 a year. And again, I'm like, well, you know, I didn't really make 250 yet, but I made 33 last month. So like that's on track. So I'm going to stand up, you know, and I'm like, oh yeah, like this is me. I am the bum.com. Like, you know, again, reading my own press clippings. 
And that, this is when it got real. This was my moment where I'm like, you're destined for more woman. Mm. I'm standing there. He says, stay standing if you're making half a million a year. Now I can't even lie on that one. <laughs> like I can't even stretch that. Right. So I sit and I expect the whole room to sit because somewhere in my head, I've got this like ego around it. No one else really sits. And I'm like, man, this room had like 400 people in it. Wow. And I was like, oh. Wake up call. Yeah. And then he goes, if you're making 750 a year, stay standing. Maybe a quarter of the room sits. And then he says, if you're making a million dollars a year or more, stay standing. And I'm like, no, no, you can't make a million. Come on. That's like, the, they lie about this. People lie about making, like, who actually does it? Because people say that, right? Like, if you Google it, it's like, there's one person in network. Like, Google will tell you that it's like one person making a million dollars a year. So I believed it, right? Like, I, here's, I guess, a big profound thing. Write this down. I unintentionally set my standards so low because of people's opinions that I did not even know from the freaking internet. So if he says, stay standing for making a million dollars a year. I'm not exaggerating. At least 300 people are standing. And specifically Jeez. the row behind me is a bunch of 18 to 26 year old boys from Brazil. They hardly speak English. It is a poverty stricken country at this time. I don't know the Brazilian economy right now. This is a few years ago. These boys are standing at a million dollars a year, 18 year old kids. In that moment, I went, I mean, my neck was like a poltergeist. Okay. Yeah, like, is this like, real? <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm sorry. Hold on. Now I don't know they're Brazilian at the time. So I'm like, what, what, how old are you children? Like, what are you doing children? Cause like, I, you know, I was like in a hundred grand a year at 23, you know? And they're like, oh, 18, you know, they can hardly speak English. I hear this right. really thick accent. They start speaking in Portuguese, 18, 22, you know, 24. I'm like, oh, and that was when I realized like, Wow. So many of us let other people's self-limiting beliefs ruin yeah, our lives our instead mm. of coming up with your own conclusions. And it was in that moment I decided to shut up, be a student, listen to everything that those men and anybody who was standing at a million, and especially Eric in the front of the room, had to say. And I just said, I was going to, I was just, that moment I said, if these people can do it, I've got to become the number one earner in this whole profession. I've got to stop setting limitations. Wow. What a powerful story. Thank you so much for sharing that. That just hit me so profoundly. And what I'm hearing is that there's a moment in your life, right? There's a moment in our, in our lives that we can decide that we are meant for more. Absolutely. And that was the moment that you decided like, you can decide it right now. And that's what I was going to say. Like, why not right now? now, right? Decide of all the circumstances going on in the world right now, all the reasons not to be, all the reasons to wait for the $1,200 stimulus check to show up, which I think personally is a, a bunch of crap. And I don't say that to offend anybody, but I don't believe that's if it pays one or two bills, is it really getting you ahead in life? Mm -hmm. Right? No, I mean, I, it's interesting because I think everything in life is perspective, everything, every single thing in your life is perspective and finding out what fulfills you. And uh, the life I was living as struggling and going more and more broke every paycheck, it was not fulfilling. I kept thinking to myself, there must be something more to life. And I didn't know that I was going to become, you know, I didn't know that network marketing was my path. I didn't know that investments were going to be my, I mean, I didn't know. I invest in all kinds of stuff now. It's crazy. Like, right. I didn't know. I had no idea because I had nobody to use as a guide. Like, I never had somebody in my childhood who was like the example. You know, so I had to start surrounding myself with people like so, that. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So how did, because the person that I know, Jesse Lee, when do you enter Boss Lee? When you entered this world of, um, let's say your first network marketing company, how old were you then? 22. 22 years old. Okay. So when you were 22, I have a hard time believing that you were the person that you are now at 22. Oh like, my God. Can we know? Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. If I haven't seen you in six months, maybe even three months, I need to reintroduce myself. I'm just... I love that. What you just said was so powerful. And I hope that people get this on so many levels. And I'm so sorry for interrupting, but it's like, no, it's whoa, fine. whoa, whoa. The level of growth. Like I watch you every day. Like I watch you. I met you a few months ago in person, which is absolutely amazing out oh. here in Seattle and got to actually give you a big hug. But I watch you. I watched who you were there and how you showed up in that room. I watch, you know, how you show up every single day 
And, and, and I want you to talk about that because what I observe in you, Jesse Lee, is a, a behavior unlike anybody, anybody, like I can actually say anybody in any industry who I have ever met. And I deal with some bosses, right? <laughs> like, yeah, sure. That's what I observe in you. And it's a commitment to doing the work. Yeah. I love it. I mean, you really nailed it, but the thing is you have to force yourself to grow. Like, I don't want to be the same version of myself ever. Like every day I want to wake up and be better. And 10 years ago, Jesse Lee, I'm like, a, I'm like, a, I don't even, I wouldn't recognize that person if I met her personally. I was just different. You know, like I was so impatient and I was so uh, aggressive in how I would build. And I was so just a uh, scarcity mindset around stuff. That's really how I was building and operating. Mm -hmm. There was nothing abundant about it. There was nothing calm about it. There was nothing peaceful about it. There was nothing patient about it. There was nothing powerful about the way I was operating. It was completely out of scarcity. And I kept on trying to get forward with that, realizing you can't get forward with that. And so then I started pouring into development. You know, you, this is interesting. And I hope some of you hear this, but like I had to be basically dragged kicking and screaming to my first event. I didn't want to go. I thought I can get everything I need out of books, which I read more probably than all of you. So like, it's not even that I still love to read. I still do all the things, but like, I didn't see the value in an, in an event until I went. And then I went and I went, Oh my God, it changed everything. And now I'm like a junkie, right? I gotta get my kid. Right. This Corona is killing me. I need my fixes, <laughs> but I started to force myself to grow. You know, it's not, it's not like I want to go live multiple times online a day. It's not like I wanted to want to, you know, oh my gosh, like put out a podcast. Literally, it is exhausting. Okay. I put out a podcast every single freaking day, which means some days I'm recording six or seven podcasts that can be an hour long at times just to make sure that I have enough content batched so that I can get it out on time. Whenever it comes out, I put out, uh, a YouTube every single day. I go live on Facebook every single day, Instagram every single day. We produce multiple IGTVs every single day to get them rolled out. There's a post on Instagram and a post on Facebook every day, at least one. There's a TikTok every day. Like for me, it's like how it's absolutely forced. There's days I don't want to show up. There's days I don't want to do. There's more days than not. I don't want to do it. But I think about legacy. I think about, I wear it on my wrist. My word is legacy. I've worn it for like three years now. It never fell off. They say when it falls off, you can change words. Well, it hasn't fallen off. So I'm gonna keep it rolling. Like That's right. what is my legacy going to be? Are my great grandbabies going to say, D my Nana was like the Bob, like you don't even know. Or they'd be like, I mean, I don't even know her name. What was her name again? Right. What, wait, what was great Nana's name? No, like literally I, there will be like a Wikipedia page a mile long. They'll be like, that was my great, great, great Nana. Let me tell you about her. She went live 9,000 days in a row. I don't even know. But like, <laughs> I just, I just don't think enough people think about that and they think, oh, but it's not convenient. But like, Joni, it's not supposed to be convenient. Right. Because if it's convenient, then everybody's going to do it. It's when you, like, I have no makeup on right now. I wish I had like good looking makeup on to capture some good looking content. Screw it. No, you just do. do. You time. show up. You show up and you just do. It's not, and that's what I love about you is you don't give a, you know what, like you just show up because you're committed to the outcome more than you are to the behavior, right? Like where well, you're committed to the outcome more than you are to the excuses and the reasons of why not to do the behavior. I, I really like that. There's so many people that just, um, you know, they, they focus on what the outcome is going to be, like you said, instead of focusing on what actions do I actually need to take. And so many people quit before they ever succeed at all. Not understanding that this is not, this is not a short term. This is not a sprint. This is a, it is a sprint, but let me explain it the way I like to. It's a marathon of sprints. Mm. So you got to run. I don't, I don't subscribe to the, just take it slow and steady. I don't. I don't, I don't think you can make the impact you want to by going slow and steady. I just don't. Okay. So I talk about, can we dive into these little sprints? Because I observe you do, I see you doing them. So what, how do you go about it? What do you do? How do you create the results that you create with sprints on your team? Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is that most people can operate in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So if you can set a micro goal and think macro, like they can't think macro. Most people can't think macro. They pretend they can, but they don't. So like I'm thinking up here and then I'm, I'm reverse engineering all the micros inside of it to find out what they actually need to do. So then we can go on little sprints with, with the team, but also myself, you know, even for me, it's like, what, you know, what goals do I want to hit by, by when, what are my, my bi-monthly goal? What is my, you know, yearly goal? What are these little, that's more on the micro scale, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, in order to get myself where I need to go. And I just think that if, if it's, 
so encouraging when you do things on a micro scale because you have that success, you have that win, you have that accomplishment. And when you start having accomplishments, that's when you start to trust yourself. Because a lot of people here will set some kind of huge macro goal. They fail at it because they give up and they, 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 then they self-deprecate. Then they don't believe in themselves. Then everything, I'm a failure at everything. And that's not fair to you because just because you're not good at one thing or you failed at one thing does not make you a failure at everything. Right. right. I don't know if that answers the question. No, it completely does. It completely does. So you, what I'm hearing you say is that People can't think macro, right? We try to, but it's, it's, it's most of the world, I think. Some people can, right? Some I don't know. Most, most of the world cannot, right? Like it's, it's a great dream and a great vision, but how do we actually create tactical um, behavior that gets us there? Like what's the needle mover, right? And so yeah. you chunk it down, like here's the goal, here's the team's goal, here's my personal goal. How do we create behavior that backs into what's the specific behavior that we can implement daily? Is that what you do over a period of time? For sure. But okay. it's in everything I do. Like any kind of thing I do, I set some kind of goal. Like what is your outcome? So what you, this is what you need to do if you want to create systems because systems is kind of the way my brain works. Yes. And then everyone wins <laughs> in a system because you don't have to think, it just duplicates. So it's like, what is your outcome? Like, what is the outcome of anything? What is the outcome? And then start reverse engineering it. So if your outcome is you want, I don't know, you want to make $10,000 a month. There we go. Okay. So if you want to make $10,000 a month, find out what, and it's not all network marketers because I have real businesses too. I mean, it is a real business, but I have traditional businesses too, brick and mortars. Sure. But like, what is your goal for said month? You want 10,000. Can you figure out exactly, thank you, babe, how many customers you need, how many maybe recruits you need, how many new clients you need? Can you find out and reverse engineer all of that and then create a system to do the following, to attract those people. What's the system for that? What's the attraction? What's the, the system for actually closing? Is there a set of scripts you need to write out that will actually get those people to convert? Cause you've then broke the goal down to this is how many people I need. So if you break anything so in your good. life down like that, then you start creating a system around it. Cause you can start actually saying what happened. What I see so much of is you try to have a high level conversation with somebody who's achieved and you say, well, what did you do to get there? And most people can't tell you. Right. Because there's no system, hmm. which means they know they can't do it again. And that's a problem. You know, like I have built now to the top of three companies in record time for all three. It's just boom, boom, boom. And it's because I look at the top goal, whatever it is I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, if I need to do that, how many personal recruits do I need? How many personal recruits winning do I need? And then I start getting the systems together to get those, get everything in place. And then it all builds from the bottom up like a, like a, like a brick house. Mm, so beautiful. You just dropped so many value bombs, like one after the other right there. Uh, it, it, there was so much gold there. Like guys go back and listen to this podcast again, because there are constant value bomb after value bomb that I can't even keep up with them, which is so beautiful. And, and this is all model level, right? If that's even a word, like you can model this behavior, right? We model, if you want to know how to get somewhere, you do what the person who has what you want is doing. Right. And so when I, if you want to have what Jesse Lee has, right. And then it's, it's a, it's a great life. I'm, I'm, I watch you, right? You, I mean, you've got an amazing partner, Alexander, and you know, you're two little monkeys. And <laughs> can you come just say hi for a quick second? I just want to see his face yeah, here. for those who are watching the video. We just got to say hi. He's here. Of course he's here. He's hi. always here. Oh, here he is. Cool. Oh, hey, uh, how are you? <laughs> how are you? So good. So good to see you. We just had to capture you on video for just a second because what I love about the two of you now is that you have taken your brand, Jesse Lee, and you're like, how can I combine the love of my life into this brand? And okay. it, it, it's just beautiful because so many people don't have that with their partner. So many people feel that disconnect and the two of you have just figured out and maybe are still figuring out um, how it works together. So just wanted there to There is a lot to unpack in that, uh, for sure. I'm also, sure it's not easy dating a that. woman of this magnitude and power. So I have Hey, he's, it's, it and takes he's a, a one in an eight billion right here. All right. right like he right. can never leave, can never leave. <laughs> I made you. Oh, I love <laughs> so it. good. Like, so no, good. it's, it's amazing to say that because first of all, I, I realized how blessed I am, which is the first thing in the sense of, I wasn't willing to settle. Like a lot of people are willing to settle in relationships, especially romantic relationships. And I'm, this isn't me saying go divorce him. Okay. But like if the person that you love and that you're trying to create a life with will not create the life you want, I think you need to check yourself. 
And I say that we're both divorced. Juicy. Yeah. We both are, right? Like we both were like, oh, we found the, no, maybe not the love of our life. Not so aligned on our goals. Like, like he knew when he tried to go to a, you know, a personal development event and she's unsupportive. And he's like, oh God, like I'm trying to be a better person. And I knew it's for similar circumstances, right? But my point being like what you said, he would not, we wouldn't, we would not mesh if he had this alpha personality. It just wouldn't work. It wouldn't. Not to say he's a beta male. That's not what this is either. I completely get it. We get it. Yeah, but absolutely. He, he lets you be you from my observations, right? Because like, I wouldn't tolerate it. Yeah, he and I love it. that. He has to. <laughs> he, like, he loves it though. Like he's yeah. so supportive. Like you, like you would have to try to find somebody who's more supportive than Alexander. Good luck. Like just the amount of, oh my God, like my, my woman is freaking amazing. Like good luck. So, but, but his skill set is completely different than mine. He is, he doesn't even realize it. He doesn't even realize how good he is, which is so cool. Cause I'm like, I'm, I get to be the, I don't want to say cheerleader because it's not the right word, but I get to gas him up like, babe, oh my God. Like, yeah. wow, you know, like, and he's like, is it, I'm like, it's really good, you know? And like being like, no, people are going to take you freaking seriously. Like we're going to, you know, like just, just, I know how good he is. I can see how and good you he compliment is. each other in that way. Right. What skills you have, maybe he's, his skills are in a different area. And I've been observing that too, different. right. Completely different. So how does that meld together? And I think that's really, and, and we can't, necessarily force people to get there in our lives right like mm. you can't make somebody be someone they don't want to be you can't make anybody do anything they won't want to that's in business that's why you got to be slow to hire quick to fire mm. and, you, and and slow you, to hire quick to fire that's such it's beautiful important. it's important and uh and just protecting your energy around stuff i mean his yeah, it's. So can it's we everything. talk about energy for a bit, a minute? Because yeah, sure. your energy is off the chain, lady, and I know that you know that. So, first of all, what creates that energy in you? Mm. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that my mother said that I came out screaming and I never stopped. So uh, we should start there. I think that I'm. I think I think we all have God-given gifts and talents. That's without a doubt. I don't think it's any secret that mine is energy. Now there are things I definitely do, and I can tell you some of these things that help me maintain my energy. But even with that, uh, I, I do have an awareness that I that it is just a firebomb inside me, and I have to let it out. And the interesting thing is that it was not well received until I it probably until probably like maybe four years ago. Like that's the great irony of this is that I've always been this super excited, empathetic, like I want to love on you, like let's go, we can do it. I, this has been me forever you know but all through grade school you know i'm sitting alone every single day at lunch like nobody ever sat with me i did not have friends i was not liked i was made fun of like mm -hmm. and then i go to college and it's like not made fun of but it was like i never found a group of friends that liked me you know in college good god like and so i think that even actually this is interesting because this just came to my head and i feel like god speaks through me so yes. it's like it almost forced me to be the best because i couldn't get seen by people any other way and so in everything I did, I was like, well, then I'm just going to outsell them. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get the best section at the restaurant that I'm waiting tables at because I'm going to at least get my clients to like me for the hour and a half I'm serving them food. And I just, I mean, I just always had to be seen somehow because everybody on earth does things for recognition. This is not a unique to me or you thing. Every single human being on earth wants to be seen. Yeah. That is, that is why that is just our driving force as human beings. And so, um, you know, my energy in general though, I will just tell you, I don't spend time on things that feel toxic to me. And mm -hmm. every single one of you knows what those things are or those people are. But I am courageous enough to cut the ties. I am courageous enough to say, this is really not serving me. Every time I'm around you, I feel it physically in my body. And you all know what I'm talking about, even if you're like, I'm not woke like that. Yes, you are. When your throat gets tight around somebody, when your chest sinks in like this, when your gut starts turning, that is literally your body saying, this person's energy is making me uncomfortable. You need to turn around and walk away. Mm. Period. End of discussion. And, I don't, and, this is, and you've probably heard this before. I don't care if it's your mom. I don't care if it's your dad, your sister, your brother, your best friend, your lover. Like, you need to figure out how to get that person away from you. And I'm not saying kick mom out of your life entirely, but I am saying you really need to limit your time. You need to limit your exposure until they start respecting boundaries. And so that's first and foremost. Um, I, I, I'm very aware when somebody's energy is off. I've said it to Alexander from day one. I'm like, mm -mm, not a good person. Mm -mm, not a good person. He's like, oh, I like him. I'm like, mm -mm. my everything told me my whole body said no. <laughs> like, well, we, 
if you're empathic and you, I mean, we all can feel it at some level. I think people, some people are just more tuned into it. Right? More tuned in, and sure. if you have a mission, if you're a woman on a mission or a man on a mission of an individual with a big mission, a mission that is bigger than you, you have to protect that energy. Oh, yeah. You have to, exactly. you have to. And I think far, far too many people allow the person who they're in front of or communicating with to control the circumstances. And who is it up to control? Right. It's up to you for sure. Up to you. So that with such powerful words, man, this is just, there's, there's so much more though, like with energy in general, yeah. like so talk I, about it because like, there's little there's, stuff. If these are little hacks. Like if you're yeah. not, you probably have seen how much water I've drank on this podcast. People right. are probably wondering if I'm a camel. Like I'm ready for another cup almost. Like, and this is, you know, what is this? 24 ounces. And that's not even your ketones, right? Like no, that's not no, even your no. ke- Well, so ketones have water too, but <laughs> I mean, ketones. Yeah, sure. But I don't want to pitch anyone or anything. No, like, no, no. But um, I, I will just, it, well, that's a whole separate conversation. I'll get to in a second. But like, I drink at least a gallon of water a day. Usually like I'm, I'm teetering towards two just because I'm like, we're 70% water. God, get it in your body. Uh, and so I feel which like- Which creates clarity because you're yes, feeding the cells of your yes, body what they need yes, for life, yes. right? I joke around, but it's like not a joke, Tony. But like, I'm like, literally your people's brains are like raisins. Like, Give me water. If you would give your water, your brain, your brain some flipping water, you'd have like a big juicy, beautiful, like grape brain, but not enough people are giving themselves water. So big on water and big on what I eat. Like I know it's not to push any of my beliefs on anybody, but I eat carnivore. You know, I feel yeah. like a machine, you know, I'm O positive blood type. Right. Um, when I'm I not- am too. And I'm vegetarian and I think we talked about this. Yeah. yeah and, and I don't push it on anybody. Like, go no, she doesn't. And I love that. Like you eat what makes your body, body feel, <laughs> made up a word, makes your body feel good. Yep. Right. And I feel right. a whole different level, you know, when I'm, when I'm, so I do that. I always move my body every day. I'm very into yoga in the mornings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe in, I believe in the sun, you know, so I like yeah. to get outside and I moved to Texas so I could get that good old vitamin D on me. I mean, we're already in summertime here, basically. Oh, I've been watching your heat, your beautiful pool and getting all kinds of jelly every day that it's cold out here in Seattle. And, sure I, and I love that. So these are all different things that you that we do, you do specifically as a high performer, a high achiever, you know, somebody with purpose and vision and a mission in the world, right? To feed your body all the nutrients and the things that it needs. And I absolutely silence. love that. Silence is vi- like, I Say that again. Vitamins. Silence is huh? like silence. Um, people Talk think I'm about super that. extroverted, and I mean, you can ask Alexander, you can ask anybody who knows me on a very personal level. Uh, I'm probably one of the quietest people you'll ever be around. But then I switch on, and Boss Lee comes out, and it's woo or whatever. Oh, right? girl, I felt it like right before, right when we turn. I'm like, oh, she just turned on. It's so good, like yeah. a switch. It's beautiful. Yep. So, so preserve that, and, and but silence in general. Every day I wake up before Alexander significantly earlier. Okay. Can we talk about, that was one of my questions. Walk us through, I'm a firm believer that how you start your morning controls your entire day. So can you talk, and I don't know if you agree with that. I'd love to hear um, how you walk, how you begin your day. Is it the same every day? Is it different a little bit? How do you begin your day? Yeah, I used to, I, uh, so funny now because I used to be one of those people who's like, I will never get up early and like have a morning routine. That is so not me. Like I want to wake up at the same time as you and just start the, t- like we're better people when I have time to myself, period. Because mm-hmm. I have the day, I have time to journal. I have to, well, I wake up and I drink a ton of water, first of all. <laughs> and then I, I go and I take electrolytes and then I go upstairs and I, we have a sun, a beautiful sun deck that literally it's like the perfect yoga deck. Except for I've gotten rained on like the last four days. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. It's like, it's perfect. And then like a storm cloud rolls and you see it in the time lapse. I'm like, y'all seriously. But anyway, um, but I go and I, I do yoga up there. So I'm in a meditative state. I am a firm belief. I, I have a hard time meditating, just like sitting somewhere. So I'm very into meditating through active meditation, which would be yoga or if we're running or if, you know, I'm at the gym or whatever else like that for me, so much clarity in my mind, but then I come and I write. So then it's just, it's time to just scribe, like what start. Are you what are you writing so, about? Um, I always write down, I got this from Simon Chan, actually, who's a friend of mine. I loved it. Every morning I start off, first of all, with three reasons I'm grateful for Alexander. Oh. Which is good. Cause sometimes like maybe you wake up and like, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of like, he doesn't ever, I don't know how to be possible. He's not awake, but like, maybe I'm like, why was he snoring last night? Which he hasn't snored in a long time. So it's like not a thing. I don't know. Maybe like, I felt like he was taking up too much of the bed, which also doesn't happen. I'm like trying to, I'm like probably the dogs, right? <laughs> anyway. here, right? But like if there's something that's like annoying me about whatever, instantly forcing myself to go boom, gratitude for Alexander, it changes everything right off that. 
which like yeah. I mean, we don't fight we only as beat. you said perspective is everything right everything so change yep. shifts so, your perspective so yep. three things you're grateful for in your partner yep and then i start writing down things that i'm grateful for in general 10 things so 10 things i'm grateful for um from the day before so i don't i don't now, if you're somebody who's really stretching and you're trying to figure out like, oh God, what am I grateful for? Uh, you can do the sky is blue. You can do the sun is out. You can do breath in my lungs. You can do food on the table. You can do roof over my head. Like I like to think in the last 24 hours, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? Uh, because it makes you actually reflect and think about what the heck happened in that last day, you know? Um, oh and so that's really useful. And then I do 10 things that I, that I have accomplished in the next 10 years. And how I just said that is very important. 10 things I have accomplished in the next 10 years, <laughs> because that's how I write them down. Like I am a world-class wife, you know, or I am a world-class mother. I write those down a lot, right? Or I only fly uh, private or first class with my whole family, or I have luxury homes all over the world, or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So these things where it's like, you know what, Jesse Lee, you are right. You have, you know, just, I mean, and that might be a stretch for some people. Maybe they can't get into it. Not like for that. this audience. We like, talk about that a lot. So yeah. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. That's what my people. <laughs> I don't just write it though. Here's what you need to do. I write it, but I feel it. Mm. So when I'm writing it, it's not just, um, it's, it's never just some, but you know, like, like I, I feel it. I well, feel how do it. you connect with oh, that feeling? I feel like because I see it in my eye. Like I, I literally feel mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. So for somebody who has a hard time, like feeling 10 years out into the future, what's a recommendation you give them to be able to bring that into the now? So I have a really cool exercise. I actually got it from a friend of mine, Sarah Centrella. She's got a really, mine too. <laughs> ah, Sarah. Yeah. Yes. So I actually coach people through this often mm -hmm. and it's called the 50 what ifs. Okay. Have you ever coached anyone through this? The what ifs? No. Oh, okay. This is really good. No, please. So what <laughs> I'm I want you to do is I want everyone to get out a pen and a paper. Let's do it. Because you need to write it down. And well, I'll, I'll, here, I'll, I'll have you do some of it with me right now. Okay. Okay. So, Joni, I want you to give me 50 what ifs. Now, if you are a dreamer, this isn't going to be that hard. I mean, okay. it's not going to be easy because 50 is a lot. We probably won't get to 50 because it'll take time. Right. But if you're a thinker where everything you do in your life is you overthink, you overthink, you yeah. overthink, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to really have to sit down. And, and, and those are the people you're actually talking about anyway are the thinkers. But you're going to have to really work through what do you want. And I have people read you the exercise as well because some of you will do, what if I buy my mom a house? What if I buy my dad a house? What if I buy my mom a car? What if I buy my son a car? Like, what do you want? So let's do it. What if... Cool. if Okay, well, what if this community I'm building in Cyprus uh, actually attracts the right people that we want into this biohacking community? So what if that happens? And what if we sell it out in, you know, the next six months? What if, or sooner, what, can I just keep going? Two, yeah, like oh, okay, cool. Cool. What if we build the biohacking CEO summit? Oh my God, I'm getting this out like publicly. It's a little bit a lot. <laughs> That's only three. Let's go. All right, cool. So what if I'm, what if I'm on Dr. Joe Dispenza's show? What if, um, yeah, I'm serious. So what if I'm on Oprah's stage? And what if, uh, I love Rachel Hollis. What if Rachel Hollis and I partner in something absolutely amazing together? And what if I'm finally a best-selling New York Times bestselling author? And what <laughs> if, <laughs> what if I buy my dream home in on Aokai Beach? And what if I buy my dream home in Hawaii? And what if I finally get my dream home in New York City as well? And, uh, uh, I mean, I could keep going on and on. Are we still going? We I mean, you're, that was like nine. So you can go. But yeah. my point is, if you do that and you write that out every six months, it should constantly so be good. Because I'm telling so you, it good. makes you start to think in your head. I, I swear to this. It makes you go, how do I have the audacity to want that? Right? And it makes you go, what kind of person do I have to become to have the three homes you just described or be on stage with Oprah or whatever? Who does Joni Dillon have to become for that to happen? And then it goes back to my systems. It goes back to your brain mm. starts to reverse engineer everything. Your brain starts to go, hold on a minute now. Like, hmm, ah, ah. Like your brain starts to your subconscious, right, right? Starts to literally put the pieces together when you're not even thinking about it. So if you are doing that, it, it just, sh I'm telling you, it shifts. I freaking love that exercise. Oh my goodness. I love it because it, it initially it was like, 
whoa, whoa, I got to like think, you know, it, like it took me a second to get, get into it. I'm like, well, what if, what if, you know, but then it was like all of the things that you want. It's like, now who do I have to be to do the things I need to do to have that life, right? Yep. To have those things. That's so powerful. Mm -hmm. So good. And it's all, we talk a lot about the subconscious mind on this podcast. So that's really, but, really, I mean, really that's, amazing. That's where the so you do that. How often do you do that exercise? Oh, that's every morning. Oh, what if? The what ifs every six months. Every six months. Okay. I love it. I love it. That's so powerful. And you just brain dump it out on paper. Yeah. Mm, so good. So juicy. And, and when you're, I mean, I know you're like, you're coaching people. So that has pulled so much out of so many people because it's all, and I like doing it with them like that, especially people who have such a hard time with that because yeah. they always cry. And I love that. Oh, I love so good. But like, they're, it's almost like people in their life have not given them permission. permission. And you're sitting there and you're like, come on, Joni. Come on. Yeah. No, no, no. Come on. You got you this. Want? Come on. Come think on. bigger. On. Think bigger. No, no, no. What do you really want? Like, come on. And they're just like, okay, well, what, what if I drive a, a, a Lamborghini? And you're like, yes, come on, Joni, give it to me. And she's like, what if, what if I buy my dad the house, but like it's next door, it's attached to my huge house. I'm like, yes, Joni. Uh, you know, it's just like, it's different. It wow. changed. It, I was saying to, 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 um, to work. Such I love it. Such a value bomb right there. Like I am taking that practice and I'm reaching out to Sarah today. Like, I can't believe I didn't know about this. So, yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's fantastic. Okay. So I want to be respectful of your time, but I'm really curious. Like if you were to think of, so we're going to wrap this up very soon is my point. Um, like the success that you have, right? If you were to say what one thing are you doing and have you been doing over the years that has related to created the success that you have right now? Like if there was one thing that people could do, like one behavior, what would that one specific behavior be? Oh, Lord have mercy, girl. It's a good one, but I got it already. So ah! is <laughs> of course you do. it goes into really what you said earlier. And I was going to touch on it, which is about modeling behavior mm -hmm. because there's, there's nothing special about what I do. I'm just willing to do it mm. and not enough people are. Wow. But, but here's what I realized because people ask me kinds of questions like this a lot. Uh, and I used to say stuff like, I don't know, like, I don't know why I'm better at whatever. And then I realized it. So I don't know if I've ever said it publicly. It's definitely not on a podcast. So here you go. I was willing to trade resources I had to get resources I didn't have. Let me give you an example. Mm, talk about so, that. Yeah. T nine years ago, I'm broke. <laughs> right? Like nine years ago, I am broke. The resource I had was time, right? Because I had a normal job, but I, I in a normal job, you're not working on weekends and you know, you have, you can wake up earlier. I could go to bed a little later. I could be tired at work, but like, whatever, it wasn't my passion. Like I could find time. Mm -hmm. The resource I did not have was money, mm, okay. but I had access to people who had money, just like all of you do through the internet and so from the internet and from people who were better than me in the same career path. So I would trade my time, my free time, my weekend time, my, you know, dinners with friends time, my whatever time, any free time I had, I traded that resource in order to get around the people who had money because that was the resource they had and they did not have time so that I could model their behavior. Because I started to see what wealthy people did. I started to see the way wealthy people walked. I started to see and hear the way wealthy people talked. I started to see the way that wealthy people speak to people and connect with people and relate to people and their, their patterns of language. I started to notice the way wealthy people slowed down when something was important. I started to pay attention to the way they would present in front of a room because I had nothing but time. Just because I, I didn't have opportunity to maybe make money, I'd say, can I shadow you tonight at your presentation? Can I, can I ride with you if I find a ride to your house so I can ask you some questions? I would trade all of my extra time for their time, for, for their money knowledge. And by trading those resources, now it's the opposite. Now it's, I see people who are willing to trade their time to get around me. And I'm like, hmm. It's interesting. So that is like the one big wow, thing. Wow, what a gem. What modeling a gem. Mm, so powerful. And I hope that you guys heard that and took it in.
Jesse Lee, Boss Lee, come on. Like there's, there's so much gold that you just dropped in this, you know, what, 55 minutes or 50 minutes that we were here together. So much gold. And it's one thing to hear information, right? There's another, it's another thing to actually receive it and then act on it right? mm-hmm. and, and act on it. And I, I, I hope that people can take this information that you've given us and really begin to change their life because there is a time right now, we are in times that are unprecedented and there is a lot of people who need a lot of hope right now. And can I just add, you know, can you take us out with this, just some words of what can somebody do who's listening to you right now, who's gone from literally not being able to pay $300 worth of an increase in rent, right? And the girl who was bullied in school, the girl who was picked on that had lunch alone, I have chills in my entire body just saying this right now, right? Because I see just this amazing, beautiful person that you've turned into and, and tears are welling into my eyes because you are just the biggest giver and all that you are, but how can somebody who's can relate to even a small fraction of that, right? Who says, you know, my life didn't turn out the way it, I, I thought it would. And I came from an abusive maybe situation, or maybe I just don't have freaking money right now. Maybe it just boils down to that. What words would you give them? Um, thank you, by the way, that was really nice. Uh, I would tell them your life is not over. And I don't care if you're listening to this and you're 18 years old or if you're 85 years old. Life is short, but life is long. And so you get the power to make the decisions in your life that can change the trajectory of your future. And the best time to plant a tree was what? A couple hundred years ago? Right. When's the second best time to plant it? Now. Right now. So get in your heart and understand that all you really need is belief. Get around people who believe in you. Spend less time with people who bring you down. Spend less time with people who make you feel like you're crazy and spend time around people who are crazy. But I mean, being crazy is kind of cool. And just understand you're never alone. You're never alone. Even if it's just virtually like this, there are so many more people out there that, that will know you and that will love you and that want to see you win and spend time even virtually with those people. Because I'm telling you, there is nothing better than listening to another person's rise from whatever it is they're going through. So you're not alone please understand that and just know that you can change your life as soon as you make the decision to try. Mm, So powerful. Thank you for those beautiful words. How can people connect with you? Because I imagine that every single person is going to want to do that. (laughs) Appreciate that. Uh, Easiest place to find me is probably Instagram. It's just I'm Bossly. I am B-O-S-S-L-E. I have my own podcast as well, The People's Mentor. You can reach out on Facebook. Which is just fabulous by the way, whether you are in network marketing or not, I have been obsessed with your podcast. I'm <laughs> serious. You. Super Seriously, cool. guys. It's, it. Thank you for it's that. It's beautiful. Thank you for the gift of being here with us today, for sharing your words of just who you are and everything that you, that you are and give to the world. I love you. I, I mean, you just you're a part of my life, um, you know, whether you know it or not. <laughs> and uh, thank, thank, you. thank you. you so much. You. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. the opportunity. And uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. Joni, you're amazing. Appreciate Aww, you. Thank you. Keep sharing your light with the world. Bye, Jesse Lee. Bye, Bobby. Bye. Take care. You too.